don't be that person. Just because you're not pursuing your dreams and your goals doesn't mean you should try and tear everybody else down because they remind you of the person that you never became. It's one thing to sit in your own misery. It's another thing to try and bring other people down into you. That's hell. That's real hell. Dude, the thing that I realized is like, and I always say this is like, especially with the sales calls, I am getting so comfortable on the phone. It's awesome. So comfortable on the phone. It's ridiculous. It's like this weird sense. I, I realized it. Not when I was on the phone, although I do, but when I was talking to Alex about door knocking for him, for his business, mm -hmm. for his car washing stuff, because I feel so confident in my ability to just persuade people to get me to do stuff, mm -hmm. to, to, to give them whatever I want. It, yes, it kind of sounds shitty saying that, but like I just feel so confident. Like every single time now, like well, because the thing that I realized, like it was after we had that conversation, I don't know if it was before, it was before St. Joe's or was the, ni was the night of St. Joe's. Mm -hmm. We had the conversation like, bro, we got to ramp up. We got to do yeah, more yeah, of this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, yeah, you were like, how did you land two gigs? And I, you're like, dude, you're you're kicking ass. Like yeah, it was yeah. like the next day we land, I landed like two, which is a lot. It's hard. It's fucking difficult because like when you're on the yeah. phone, like their media answer is like they don't want yeah, it. They don't skeptical. want it. Yeah. So like I've been like slowly getting to the point where yeah. I've made enough calls to now where I'm like, I get past that first no. Yeah. But they're like, no, I don't think so. We have in-house content. I'm like, listen. I was like, we'll come out to a game. We'll do it for free. We don't need anything in return. We're just trying to get our name out there and you get the free content. There's nothing there. I was like, I noticed you have a volleyball game on this date. Can we come out to that day? And they're, and they're like, well, I don't know. We have a season thing coming up. Maybe it'd be better for you to come out. And then I'm like, oh, so like, because immediately for like the first probably, I don't know, 50, 60 calls mm -hmm. that I made, they're all like, well, I don't think I want you to have you here because there's something that I'm missing or like, no, because insert excuse here. But then when you just kind of keep talking and keep, having the conversation like you just like eventually they're like oh like he's a genuine guy he's not you know this yeah. isn't some sales that's why, call that's why yeah. like when, when you said like you're just i mean to me it's like yeah. <laughs> okay first off it's like <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> like who's okay first off whoever says no is to professional okay, exactly to, i mean like i don't i'm not trying to put us on a hoy horse but like i think from the quality alone on this camera yeah. and like from what like what we just sent in our portfolio like what people are to me it's like it's not even like you're trying to persuade them to get something like you're just asking to do something and you're just kind of making them aware of the reasons for why you want to do it so, and it's it's all the purest intentions in the yeah, world literally. right and it's like yeah. Like, okay, yeah, we want to make this our livelihood, but we're not trying to scam you in the process no, yeah, of doing no, it because we're, literally. I feel like, you know, with, especially with the values we have with the business. Yeah, just, literally. That's not what we're trying to do. Not at all. Uh, not at all. But yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Alex Mosey talks about it a lot too. He's like, you know, if your sales team sucks, quote unquote, your product might suck. Yeah. It, it, what's the, it's a quote by Naval. It's, uh, you have to sell because, I, I don't even know the fucking quote. But it's basically like you, the only reason why you're you have to try so hard to make a sale is because your product mm. sucks because it doesn't sell itself, mm. and that's what I've been thinking about. Like when we go to St. Joe's, when we go to Mitchell, we go wherever. Mm -hmm. Every time we've gone, every time we've gone all <laughs> twice, we they ask us for a meeting. We don't ask them. Yeah, dude. The product and the service has been selling itself. No, it's not going to happen every time. No, no. But, <laughs> We've just gotten really lucky. <laughs> but we, we have got, But we're putting ourselves in a spot to get lucky. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's also like, we're fucking good. Like, we're good. We're yeah. undeniably good. Now. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And so to me, it's, it's like, it's it's so obvious. Because, yeah. dude, I'm like, I'm, when, like when you were, when we were looking at, like, because I was trying, I literally spent like two hours trying to find fucking videos to model because mm -hmm. I was, I get, I, whatever. And I'm looking at the best Division One men's soccer schools in the United States, and they have no example videos. And I'm like, mm. bro, the market is uncapped. I think that's crazy. I know. It really makes you think. Because, like, I don't want to... No, I, I, everyone's not lazy, but it's just like, I think... I just think people don't want... Yeah, I mean, like, on it, yeah, like, on it, pretty... Because even like you look at the Patriots or yeah. you look at like these big teams, like, yeah, they have stuff out there. And it's not yeah. to say like we're like the grand about grand, but like I know if we were put in a spot with a yeah. team like that, like, bro, it's it's over. Well, bro. dude, you look at the St. Joe's, this kid from overseas, he's a very good goalkeeper, committed to St. Joe's after he saw the video that we put on their page. Yeah. 
that was the breaking point for him. Yep. He was teetering on the edge. He saw that video, saw the professionalism, loved it, decided to commit. And this is a D3 nobody knows about school. What if Stanford men's soccer has videos like that? Yeah. How much less time are they going to spend Makes recruiting? How much sense. less time are they going to spend yeah, doing X, huge. Y, and Z that they need into getting players to look at their stuff, to look at their page? Like, all of these things that come into just having high-quality content consistently on your page. Yeah. And it's like, dude, that market is just uncapped. People just need to be influenced the right way. Yeah. And it's true. It's like there's mm. all this potential that's just sitting there on the table. We just need to come in and let people know. Yeah. And I think the best way to do that is, thank you, Alex Ramosi, <laughs> is to just go through it. Go. Just keep doing our free lead magnet and see. It, let the chips fall. Like, yeah. fuck it. Believe me. Don't believe me. I don't give a shit. Well, let's <laughs> let's we'll see where the chips fucking fall. You're such an absolutist. Like, yeah. stop. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Actually, I wanted your two cents on this. Yeah. I know I keep talking. This is completely... No, I don't care. It's a tangent. No, no, no. You're good. Um, it's all good. I'm going to leave names out of this. A, um, you probably will know who, and they're not going to be listening to this anyways, but either way, um, my friend's dad his, is always telling him to not start a business and to continue going to school, even though he wants to start a business. That's mm -hmm. what he would be better at. He knows that. He's afraid to start, but all he needs is some encouragement from the people that love him to start it, and he would. But he's not, and he's getting the opposite, and he's staying in school. And a couple days ago, I'm sitting there, and he spent literally like 45 minutes trying to convince me to get a job and to stay in school. He was like, he's like, well, what's your favorite part about your business? And I was like, I was like, well, that's a good question. I was like, I think the big part for me is like, it's not even like, I do love videography. Like, it's no, fun, yeah, yeah. but I don't think it would really matter. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it matters to like, a 50% 50, 50 extent. Like, videography is really fun. I love videography. I loved photography. I love yeah. sports. Like, all this stuff. It's fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, but I feel like, especially with you and I, we can get to, like, any field. And we would just love building Dude, I was business. literally, <laughs> we had the food truck out there today. And yeah. I was put on, uh, <laughs> it was, so we had to be inside because of the rain today. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. I was a food runner for the pizza. And I'm like, this is awesome. I yeah, love right? this. Yeah, like, this is, yeah. I was running back and forth with, like, yeah. fucking five, six trays of pizza. I'm, <laughs> like, <laughs> stashing them out, dishing them out. I'm, like, oh, I love this. Like, yeah, right. it just brings me back to my days. But, yeah, yeah, I totally 100%. get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, and as a total side note, bro, <laughs> happy people are happy wherever they are. Yeah. Like, Yes, job dependent. You should pursue something that you, that you love yeah, to do. It impacts you for sure. But happy people are happy wherever they are. Like, yeah. it's really mm -hmm. like, it plays a, it definitely plays a role. Like, it will make you a lot more miserable if you're in a job that you hate. Okay. After, but, but I think a lot I really of wanted to, I really, okay. So, after we answer, finish this up, I really want to talk about that. Okay. Like, happy people are just happy wherever they are. Mm. Oh, I have to say my name. Um, Anyway, so he spent an hour trying to convince me. He was asking me questions. He's like, well, what's your favorite part about building the business? And I'm like, well, I just love building the business. I love the I love the calls. It's scary, but it's fun afterwards. It's fun landing clients. And I'm like, so I feel like, you know, probably most of it is, you know, just the relationships and like. Um, so I, I think I think the, the, the best part for me is is building relationships and, and yeah. the, the EQ stuff that I have to endure. And. And then he just started rattling off different jobs that I can get. He's like, and it's a hundred K start out, you know, pay for out, right out of college. And he's like telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, and he's like, so what do you think? And I'm like, no. And then I was talking to his son and I was like, listen, man, I was like, he has good intentions. Sometimes at this point, I didn't feel like he did. I feel like the reason why he was coming at me and this is what I told him. I said, I think the reason why he was trying to convince me to stop trying to build a business is because I'm reminding him of the things that he never did. I'm reminding him of the life that he never tried to live. I'm pursuing the things that he never pursued. He didn't try and start a business when he was fresh out of college. He didn't try and pursue his dreams, even though everyone was telling him it's not going to work. He didn't try doing the things that were scary because he wanted to live a comfortable life. And he did for 20 something years. And now he has to look back as a father with kids and responsibilities and say, I should have done it. And that's one thing. But another thing is to consciously or unconsciously, you're still at fault to try and pull other people down to not do that. And I get to sit in a position where I'm conscious enough to be like, ugh. but what about his son? He's going to keep going to school. He wants to start a business. His heart wants to start a business. You can look at him. I'm watching him talk to me and he makes eye contact when he talks about building a business. And the second he talks about going to do his bullshit school stuff and hit his safe path with benefits, he looks away. He doesn't look at me. He can't look at me in the eye. And I can't even say that to him because it's going to crush him because he's not ready to hear it yet. 
but the, I don't say the sole reason because the sole reason is him, but a huge impact and influence is coming from his dad. And it's like, fuck, A, I'm super blessed not to have that pressure, that same level of pressure, but B, it's like, dude, don't be that person. Just because you're not pursuing your dreams and your goals doesn't mean you should try and tear everybody else down because they remind you of the person that you never became. It's one thing to sit in your own misery. It's another thing to try and bring other people down into you. That's hell. That's the, real hell. The worst part is his dad probably doesn't even know what he's doing. That's exactly what my, yeah, it's like sad. Because I was talking to him about it and I'm like, I'm like, because his dad, his, his dad did start a business about real estate and stuff like that, but it's never, it's never going to scale as much as it would have if he'd started when he was in his 20s without responsibility like we are. And so to me, it's like a, he has a small taste of what it could have been if he had 20 extra years of compounding. Yeah. And it's like, God. Like, what do I, like, what would you do? Like, what am I supposed to do in a situation? He just got to either die to his dad or die to his dreams. It's as it. simple as that, man. Simple as that. I mean, I know my dad. <laughs> no, um, yeah, but I, yeah, man, I feel for him. It's tough. I mean, I don't necessarily know what he's going through, you know. Um, it's a lot different kind of coming at it from, I mean, we have, you know, our own kind of cases, but I'm sure I've never even, I the, literally the first time I saw that person's dad was mm -hmm. the snap you sent me uh, yeah. <laughs> literally two days ago. Yeah. Um, seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, um, no, 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 it seems like he's a great guy. And I know he's done a lot for you. Yeah. Um, but I think when someone is just hovering over you, on a 24-7 basis and is unfortunately provide or fortunately and unfortunately provides you with everything that you have house shelter water yeah. clothing yeah it's really hard <laughs> to get out of because you're mm -hmm. dependent on them and what are you gonna say you're gonna flip them off like you just i mean you kind of got to through your actions, right? But, like, to yeah. say that to them, it's really, really hard. And to have a logical conversation and where their understanding, and I'm just going to guess that this person, when it comes to this topic, is not very open-minded. Yeah. It's very hard to try and convince them because I, at least I feel case-dependent on what we're talking about, If for our parents at least. If we provide the reasons for what we're doing, yeah. most times, more often than not, case dependent yeah, they'll yeah. come to the conclusion right and obviously like i know my case when i say like i'm not gonna be working my job next year um guys life please don't <laughs> fire me just yet <laughs> i want i need a bit more i'm money. like bro i've been telling more and more people about I that i heard you say I, it in the meeting oh was, you did i was walking in your room oh, and you're like you're like listen guys I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you i'm probably not gonna be here for another year he's like none of you guys will <laughs> be back in another year and i was like yeah. Yes, come on, big boy. Manifest come, that shit. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, I was, I was, and yeah. Anyways, like I'm telling more people that. Um, what was I saying before that? Remember? Um, it's a lot more easy, for, basically, for your parent, uh, for our parents to be. Able yeah, to for our parents to kind of come to that understanding and come to that. But I think, you know, I think, you know, this person should kind of, with through their actions, just do their own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's kind of, it's kind of what we did. You yeah. know, because I don't really talk about this. I don't really try to bring that subject up. It's just, it's really tough for him. And I, yeah. I, I really do empathize with him and it's tough, but he's just got to say, you know, fuck it through his actions and just do it anyways um, to, to the best of his ability. Right. And I get it. It's going to be hard because he's, he's not at that understanding yet because like literally dude, I was thinking about this last year. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I knew, I knew I wanted to do something with videography. I knew it was on that path and I, yeah. or at least I knew because I've always kind of wanted to start my own thing, my own business. Like, yeah. that's always kind of, I mean, I started, like, kind of, I've always looked at, like, the entrepreneurial, entrepreneur, <laughs> I got it, entrepreneurial lifestyle, and was like, well, that's pretty cool, man. I really yeah, like bro. that. And it's just, it's so freeing because, you know, when people even bring up, like, for instance, my boss saw me at uh, the football game that week, and yeah. he saw us in our uniforms, he's like, he said it in front of the entire staff meeting. He's like, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna embarrass you a little bit, Cal. He was like, I was so impressed by wow. you out there in your uniform and like with you with the camera and like that's my top boss. Yeah. And he's like, dude, you could be working for the NFL one day. Yeah. And he said that, and I was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. You said that. That's so nice. That's so kind. Yeah. But I was like, I don't want to be working for the NFL. Right. I was like, as a third party, yeah, that would yeah. be awesome. But yeah, like, yeah. this to me, in this position with 
the kind of abilities we have, this job is invaluable. It doesn't matter what position exactly someone could yeah. offer to me. Like, exactly, yeah. And when he was telling me that, bro, the first thing that came to mind when he was trying to convince me of jobs, it's yeah. 100K straight out of college. I'm like, I would take 10K living with my mom till I'm dead yes. and yeah. do this. I know. It just feels so much more right. I don't give a fuck about the money. <laughs> no, clearly. I don't <laughs> give a shit. I don't give a shit. Like, uh, I, like, no, really. Like, I do, but in terms of priorities, no, bro. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to fucking... Yeah. Go get a no. safe and secure nine to five so that I can make more money. For oh, what? Sickening. For what? Oh, man. And I, th- but the conversation always comes down to. Excuse me. The conversation always comes down to, it's just so unlikely that it'll work out for you. And then I'm saying, and then I I don't know how else to tell him. Like, I get I'm not Elon Musk, but I don't know how else to tell you that. I know I'm a 1% person besides telling you just wait and see. And that's all I can say because I have no evidence. Yeah. I mean, I guess I do like anecdotal habits. Like who do you know that does all the things that Cal and I do on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Like who do you know that's willing to put in this work? Yeah. But that's, I'm, I would be wasting my breath. It's like, there's no results to speak for it. So it's like, yeah. just, I'm just gonna, I just well, have to stay quiet and be like, yeah. The nice, thing is yeah. like, we're not going to stop trying. That's it. We're not gonna stop. Yep. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. Like, I, I doesn't, it doesn't matter if if we lose all these cameras, if they get blown up, like we'll figure it out. We're gonna figure right, it out. Right, we'll figure it out. Like, doesn't <laughs> shit goes under, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Figure right, it out. like, because <laughs> like literally, you're my ride or die. That's That's it. When it comes to That's like it. literally life, That's so it. I mean, I think yeah, I maybe mean, it's it's that simple. And I think yeah. I think a lot of people, I was, you just have to be adequate to be dangerous yeah. in today's society. So have a few good habits. And wow, you're like above everyone. Uh, everyone, <laughs> which is kind of scary. Like I think you brought it up one time. It's like when people walk into your room and they see your bed made. Yeah. They're just like, oh my God. Like someone's like, oh God, you get eight hours of sleep. I'm like, <laughs> I get this standard amount of sleep. Like, yeah. It's it's this I, I don't want to say it's like, listen, I get it. subjective values. Yeah. It's different, right? Like not saying like I get I get it, but but still, it's like the the value that that represents yes, in that insane. kind of instance. Yeah, that when someone becomes so amazed that yeah. you have your quote unquote crap together, yeah. or you have you've thought for yourself, they're amazed and they kind of take a step back. And most times, they're either in a state of it's like, oh my god, this person's on a pedestal. This person's in like in living a whole other life, and through that. They don't think they can do it themselves mm. when they actually can. Yeah. They have such limiting beliefs based on whatever friend group they're in, whatever family they're in, whatever society they're in, mm. that they don't realize it's a possibility. Right. When I started my powerlifting career, I never would have thought 405 was possible. Right. I never would have thought I would have squatted 441 in competition. Yeah. I started working with Mikey Within three months, I squatted 405, and my my max was like 335 at the time. That's insane. So I'm just using that example because when you start to work with, when you start to hang around other people that see your actual potential yeah. and start to bring that through to you, they break those limiting beliefs mm. in their hand. Yeah. But you just got to have blind faith because every yeah. single time, Mikey was like, dude, you're about to hit 405. Dude, you're about to hit 405. I never believed him. But now I believe I can hit 500 within the next year, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's that switch. Yeah. And that's how I know we're going to make it. Yeah. Because we just, we don't have those limiting beliefs, the, yeah. those blinders over our eyes. Yeah. You know what's weird though, at least for me, my perspective, I feel like I still, like when I started, I still had a bunch of limiting beliefs. Like I, I, I was, no, just, I, I still do too. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, but I'm I just not like, perfect. Yeah. But I just like did it anyway. Cause like the thing I think about immediately is our business. Like I have so many limiting beliefs. <laughs> like there's like, I can feel my internal battle of like this like some, we're going to figure something out that about the market. We're going to figure yeah. something out about business and we're never going to make it. But I've been saying the same thing to myself and I never thought we'd be in the position that we are in now yeah, exactly. as quickly as we are now. Like my self limiting belief would have told me we, we wouldn't be in this position that we're in now getting like basically fully booked. Like I, I would never say that. I wouldn't, I would never say yeah. that. I would never say that we would, year. we would even have the, the facilities to buy an R5C. Yeah, yeah. I would never say any of these things. And it just keeps happening. And it just keeps happening. But the reality is, is it's outworking your self-doubt, period. Yeah. 
Because mm-hmm. you're always going to have limiting beliefs. They're never going to go away. Of course. Surrounding yourself with better people will help them slowly be dampened. But you just have to do the thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. It, disregard how you feel. If you feel like you're the worst piece of shit ever, or you feel like you're the fucking man, it, it's irrelevant. If you do the thing, regardless if you have doubts or not, you will slowly crush that self-doubt belief. Period. And that's what we're doing now. And that's what I want my motherfucking friend to do. Yeah. Is to just outwork that shit. Because I'm like, dude. he doesn't know it's a... He doesn't know it's real, but you see it. But, You're dude, the, I, but it's like, I, I don't know how he can't know, see it. It's like, lay out the math. Like, yeah. fuck my ideas. Yeah. Like, you knock on 30 doors a day. You get five of those doors to let you do their car for free. That's a radical overestimate. Probably it'll be five for five, most likely. Can I do your car for free? No. What? That doesn't happen. You go knock on 30 doors. You do five of them. It takes you a couple hours. You weren't going to do shit with those couple hours anyways. You weren't working. You weren't doing homework. Whatever. You do that. Then the next month, one of those, let's say 20 cars that you did that week for free, one or two or three, come back as reoccurring customers. Mm -hmm. That's 200 bucks a month from each car. That's 600 bucks a month that you're making as a side hustle after one month. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so practical. And imagine you just knock on as many doors as possible and you ramp it up. That's only five days a week. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, you would quit your job so fast. You would drop out of school so fast. But he you just would won't te- do it. You would tell your dad to go fuck himself so fast. You wouldn't want to do anything else. You wouldn't do anything else. So when you ask him, let's go do it, what does he say? He says, no, I want, he says, no, he wants to do it. He doesn't want to do it with me. And I'm like, that's fine. Uh, you're not doing anything. I'm like, the reason why I want to be involved is so that I can just fucking kickstart the gear and then just give him the lawnmower. Yeah. Just to show him, oh, this shit can work. Oh, that's fucking crazy. I have 10 cars to clean next week. Oh, this is actually kind of crazy. I didn't understand it was going to be this this wild. Because my initial thought was his fear factor was coming from, oh, he doesn't want to go knock on doors because he doesn't want to get rejected. And that's some of it, but most of it is his dad. Mm. Most of it is the ear right here mm-hmm. telling him, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out for you. You're too stupid. Mom always needs to solve your problems. If it's not safe and secure, you're never going to make it because you need safe and secure. Mm -hmm. It's all these self-limiting beliefs. And I need him to fucking kick him in the nuts. (laughs) But he can't. And I can't help but think that if he were to move it, if me, you, and motherfucker had a house and we lived together and I said no contact with this one person for a full month, that he would start the business and be making over 500 bucks a month from the business as a side hustle. It's so practical because <laughs> like I look at our business and I'm like, I wish the numbers were that easy. Cause I'm like, yeah, no. you look at that, like, well, everyone has a car, right? Well, exactly. But it's, it's different. Just dependent on the industry. Right. So, I mean, cause it's, we can get one gig and it could be like 5,000. Right. So it's like, true. We're not at that point yet. <laughs> just wanted to, well, we, we definitely can be. We're on the road. We, yeah. But we just, you know, we're getting to a point where we're trying to make those contacts. So yeah. How long, how long are we going? Um, 55. Okay, okay. Do you want to touch on what you were going to say earlier? Yeah, about no, happy so, people I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no, I think, well, I want to kind of hear your thoughts on that. Like, happy, why are people, why are happy people always happy wherever they go? Um, I think it's ultimately if you keep boiling it down because perspective is a choice, perspective is a trained choice. Yep. Because it's like, like, I remember when I was working at the, the golf course and, this happened all the time. And I think this is one of the first things we actually ever talked about. There was this one shitty part of the job that was like the most physically grueling and annoying. And you have to go, it's called picking the range. And you have to go down this loud ass machine to go get all the golf balls Mm -hmm. off the range. And people would always be like, I fucking hate this. I don't want to do it. It's so annoying. And every single time I'd be working with someone that really hated it, I would just pick the range every time. I would just do it every time. And people were like, why do you want to pick the range so bad? I'm like, because you don't. And it brings me immense amount of energy and joy to know that I'm making your life easier. Mm. And that perspective of just like, I just wanted them to feel better at work yeah. because A, it made their job more enjoyable, but B, it made my job more enjoyable. But who, no one loses. Service. That's it. But that perspective is just a choice. 
It's just a choice. Because I work with other kids that are exact same way. Christian Luca, shout out to Christian. He's the same fucking way. Him and I would always battle with each other to do the harder job <laughs> because we always wanted the other person to have to do less because we just wanted to be good people. And it made the, the job more energizing, fulfilling. We're washing off fucking golf clubs. We're, we're refilling. the. It's Anyone can do it. It's mindless work. It's annoying. It's physically grueling. You're sweating your ass off. You stink. You're tired. You're up at fucking four in the morning. But that perspective was a choice because there are people that went in and complained the whole time. Like, the baseline is no one enjoys the job inherently. Mm. It's not fun inherently to do. We all start at that base. Why do I have fun at work and you don't? It's a question. Why not? Because of chemical imbalances or it's because I'm choosing to look at things a certain way. Because I know me in high school would have fucking hated it. Well, mm -hmm. I did work. I mean, me freshman year of high school would have hated it. But me senior year of high school loved it. Yeah. Why? Because perspective is a choice. And there's people that are going to be happy at work. And there's people going to be pissed off at work. Mm -hmm. The situation is the same exact situation. You have the same job. You're wearing the same shirt. Yeah. doesn't matter. One person's happy. One's not. Why? What do you think? Yeah, no, I just, I, th I keep thinking about, like, because uh, it's past Wednesday. <sighs> my, I, you told, I told you about what mm -hmm. happened. Oh, my God, just, it was, I can't say what happened, but, like, I yeah. was on, for context, like, I was on call for, like, the entire campus, right? So, like, if an issue happens, they come to me, and it was, yeah. like, we have, like, this thing called active duty, where it's, like, every, we have, like, resident assistants in each hall, right? And they're, they're, like, kind of, uh, at the front desk if anybody needs anything, right? And we had some extremely, extremely high-level cases that, like, I'm not going to obviously disclose what's going on, but, like, yeah. it was, I was dealing with that for, like, six hours straight, and it was nonstop, 24-7. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. You know, it's like, I'm like, and I texted you, I'm like, you're the DOD. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm a, I was kidding, but, like, yeah, yeah. still, it was just, it was grueling. But in that process, what I was thinking to myself was how, even though this sucked in the moment and it mm. was awful, like what I always say about, especially with the position, the RA position and things like this, like being in the military, being like a police officer or something right. like that, they're not putting these on the same plane at all, yeah, right? Yeah. But saying like being in those kind of jobs where you're doing a lot of crisis management and crisis kind of situations and uncomfortable services that you have to do such as like managing people's behavior right like who wants to do that right, right? no one yeah. correct people like you're indirectly benefiting yourself so much yeah. and within those moments what i was thinking throughout the entire night was if i can get through this mm -hmm. which or well, the first thing i was saying to myself was no matter when I went into these situations, I always say to myself, I know I'm going to get out of this. Yeah. I know there's going to be a solution. And yeah. just having that in my brain mm. really allows me to maneuver through these situations right. because I know a solution is going to come. Right. And so also too, what happens is I realize that indirectly I'm building great skills at the same time too. So for instance, like when we're doing an edit or, you know, you're doing a sales call and you're like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. Oh my God, this edit sucks. Yeah, yeah. That perspective that I'm choosing in that moment mm. is what brings me that kind of I don't want to say happiness because I'm not just like, <laughs> yeah. hey, another issue. What can yeah. I help you with? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like you choose that perspective exactly like you so, said. And you choose the tough shit. You choose, or you don't necessarily choose the tough shit, but like you have these responsibilities, but you take them on and you pursue them as good as you can yeah. to the best ability because yeah. indirectly it's benefiting you so much because you're actualizing that kind of potential in those kind of circumstances. Yeah. And then it reflects back to you in the mm. future when that circumstance comes up. And what do you know? 100%. When you, when you quote unquote progressively overload mm -hmm. with the harder circumstance that you're building that skill, you're ironing that sword. Yeah. And so in those moments, that's what I always think about. And so I think, like you said, I think happiness really does go with, you wherever you go mm. but i think unfortunately for a lot of people they just live to see friday they just live to see the weekend and it's like they hate their week and i get it right like the job the environment like it might not be it right but it's like that's why i always or at least people i'm, I'm around and like people that i know and my close circle always or people that i just know love to work and love to just put their all in it and everything is because they're just going to, even though the, the reasons for what they're doing and the intentions may not always be yeah. 
hundred percent, they still just put their nose down and go all in on That's it. Right. And it's like that just benefits them so much rather than just passively sitting back and half assing things. And I think it was a tweet that you put on your Instagram about how people just go to work, come home, argue with their <sighs> partner, walk the dog, watch TV, go to bed, repeat. And I was like, damn, that life is scary. Because there's no... <laughs> there's no, like, real activity in their life. And it's so sad to see because they're just... I can just tell that they're waiting until they're 65. And then when they hit 65, they're not going to be doing anything. Right. Because I was thinking about this literally yesterday, too, yeah. because I would rather... Have a night like that yep. where shit is just getting piled on top of me. I'm yeah. just getting fucked from yeah. all different angles. Like, yeah. seriously, bro. Yeah. Shit sucked. Like, it yeah. really did. And I'm yeah. glad I was able to help people. I'm glad I was able to reach a solution. But by 1.30 in the morning, I thank the Lord I didn't get any more calls. But, like, I was toast. I was done, man. Like, yeah. it was awful. But I would rather have that. Yeah purpose in my life yeah. than nihilism right. and pointlessness. Right. I'd rather because sometimes, a lot of times, like when I finish everything that I do, I'm like, what do I do now? Yep. And shit sucks. Yep. I feel I feel bad. It's way worse. It's way worse. It's way worse. It's funny actually you say that because I remember growing up, what used to happen all the time, especially when I was when I would have to do chores. I remember, I remember it specifically when I would have to shovel snow. My dad would always tell me, because I would be pissed off, I'd be throwing a fix, I didn't want to do whatever. And he would always tell me, he's like, I don't give a fuck. He's like, you, <laughs> you're going to do it. You're going to do whatever yeah, it is yeah. that you need to do. Awesome. But I love your dad, man. <laughs> you can do it pissed off, or you could do it in a good mood. He's yeah. like, but you're going to do the fucking thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And I knew it. And like, I would, he would say it so many times to the point where like, it didn't like resonate in my ears anymore. It would just like, he, d it was, oh, here goes dad again. But then after a while, you realize like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. he's he was right for sure. Yeah. Because like, sometimes, sometimes the life gonna be shit, and I you're know. gonna have to yeah. just you're just gonna have to fucking do it. Yeah. And so, you can do it with a smile on your face, or you could do it pissed off, and that's a choice because yeah. your perspective is a choice. Yeah. It is a hundred percent a choice. Yeah. And you could see that with yeah. any example that you want. I yeah. to me, I just dislike the fact that I know there are going to be people that are just listening to this. Know, if it's a soundbite or whatever, that think immediately like, "You don't understand." I have a chemical imbalance, and it's like, get fucked, dude. Like it's so annoying because it's not that I can relate to you. It's that there are people that have it worse than you that are doing it better than you, and you're using things as an excuse when you don't have to absolutely use it as an excuse. Yeah. And there are people with plenty of excuses. I have my fair share. Sure, you have your fair absolutely. share. You have your fair share. Some people have it worse than others. Fine. Completely acknowledge. And I have empathy for that. But when you start to use your excuses in situations where you don't need to, everything you say is invalidated. Everything. Because now the line is no longer clear. And with that in mind, if you're going to be pissed off at a job that you don't have to be pissed off at, if you're getting pissed off because you got too much fucking mocha cream in your coffee <laughs> or because you have to go shovel snow yeah. or woe is me because of X, Y, and Z, give your fucking excuse and yeah. excuse here, yeah, then I have no empathy for that. I just haven't. I can't feel sorry for you anymore. I can't because you're using it when you don't need to use it. And perspective is a choice when it is a choice. And if you're going to decide to let life take you by the fucking arm and just throw you around based on your external cir circumstances, that's your choice too. But don't complain about it. At least not to me. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not here to hear it, to be honest. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, man.